Hey, I'm Joey Savage and you're here in the Glaxon Lab where we're on part three of Atronol. We're gonna talk about choline, what it does to your body and how it's gonna help you on Glaxon TV. And just so you know, just like last time, everything I do and say here has not been approved by the Food and Drug Administration and nothing I say here is intended to treat, cure, prevent, or diagnose any kind of disease. So what are we talking about? We're talking about choline and the different types of choline and where it comes from. For the most part, it's found in uh, cell membranes. It's involved in a lot of uh, the structural parts there. That's why it's found in high concentration in eggs and fish and sunflowers. And it's also a precursor to certain things like s methionine and betaine. I'm sure you've heard of them plenty of pre-workouts because they're methyl group donors and they exchange those a lot. But more importantly, it's a precursor to a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. 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 This part's the choline and this part's the acetyl. And we'll come back to that in a bit. But what is acetylcholine? Acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter that actually has two different specific domains. One is the central nervous system, the other one is the peripheral nervous system. And most of you who find uh, choline or choline by tartrate, alpha GPC or CDP choline in any of their pre-workouts, it's usually there to enhance what's called the mind-muscle connection. And this is what goes on in the peripheral nervous system. You have receptors on your cells, these are for acetylcholine. The acetylcholine comes into contact and this is the neuromuscular control going on. This is what comes back to balance and coordination and reaction time. And as long as you have sufficient amounts of acetylcholine, it's like having great cell phone reception. You're in the middle of the, the city, it might as well be like high-speed broadband kind of uh, communication going on between you and your environment. However, if you're stuck out in the boondocks and your acetylcholine levels are kind of low and you maybe have one or no bars at all, you know, this is where you don't talk to your body as well. You might stumble more and not have as good a coordination. However, at nighttime, when the body shuts the signal off, it's also what's behind uh, sleep paralysis. So if you've ever woken up from a nightmare and couldn't move your body, it's because your acetylcholine has been turned off because that's part of your circadian rhythm. Anyway, back to the central nervous system, acetylcholine, in the very same kind of sense that it works with balance and coordination and reflexes, has a lot to do with spatial memory. Now, if you think about this context, your peripheral nervous system, it's choline, it's your mind, it's working within this box. I know how to move leg, I know how to move arm, I know how to move finger. This also connects to the spatial memory. Where did I leave my keys? I left them outside in a wheelbarrow on top of a rock in the backyard and I just now remembered. See, that's where the central nervous system of spatial memory comes in. The other thing that it does is if you have sufficient enough acetylcholine levels in the central nervous system, this is where working, learning, and just the, the acquisition of new information comes in. This is what this is for. So anyway, um, Adrenal has four different kinds of cholines that are in it. And to talk about this, I'm gonna bring in my handy dandy tray of cholines. Now, a lot of people have a lot of different types of choline in their products, but I don't know if anybody is gonna bust out d d d seven different types and talk to you about them. So what we have here are seven different types of choline. Now the first most common type of choline that you're gonna find in any other kind of nootropic and pre-workout is some stuff called choline by tartrate. Now most of the time you find choline by tartrate is a, a racemic mix of the tartaric acid and choline, but what we have here is a completely levorotatory form of choline by tartrate known as vitacholine. So this is a really good way to get the most bioavailable form of choline bitartrate that there is on the market, but there is more to this story. Um, choline bitartrate like this, it'll dissociate with the tartaric acid and it provides itself as an acetylcholine uh, precursor. So it can become acetylcholine directly. Now next is alpha-GPC. There's two different kinds of alpha-GPC that are on the market right now. If you get alpha-GPC in any type of pre-workout or capsule product, then it's probably gonna be this kind of stuff right here. This is very powdery and fine. This is the 50% alpha-GPC that you'll find in most powder formulations. Now, if we pull this, then we get to this stuff over here, which is, uh, I'm gonna have to get a different thing for this, but basically this is your greater than 50% alpha GPC and it is like syrup. It's very, very thick, very, very viscous. There's no way you're gonna get this in, in any kind of capsule product or any kind of powder product because it just simply de would defy its own physical properties in order to do so. Now, if you do get an alpha GPC that is of sufficient quantity, say it is 99% or something remarkable like that, then it's probably gonna be in a soft gel. So just for those of you that are shopping for good choline, if you're gonna find the 99, it's gonna be in a liquid form. Next after that, you've got phosphatidylcholine. And 
Phosphatidylcholine comes in a variation of different stabilities at different percentages as well. We use this one in Adrenal because it is, once again, a nice flowing fine powder. This comes from sunflowers. Um, so we mentioned that earlier. This is a 20% phosphatidylcholine that comes from sunflowers. It's stable in a powder form. You can have this in any kind of capsule or pre-workout kind of product. It works out just fine. But if you go up in the increasing potency, you're gonna find this stuff. Now this is approximately 50% phosphatidylcholine and it doesn't behave quite like the other one does. It's a fine flowing powder. And if I try hard enough, I can get it to stick to me completely. <laughs> so this really wouldn't work well running through any of the machinery we have in house. I think it would probably clump up your product and make your you know, pre-workout turn into a rock or your capsules turn into little stones. But anyway, that's the approximately 50%. If you go any higher than that, once again, very similarly like you had with the, uh, with the Alpha GPC, is that you've got this really thick, really viscous form of phosphatidylcholine. Now, if you're gonna get anything over 75%, like this 80 plus percent, then you're gonna find it in this, this really, really thick molasses-like type of substance. And then the last kind of choline that we're going to talk about that's in Adrenal is this stuff, CDP choline. And this is probably, or at least in my opinion, the most interesting of all the cholines because not only does it contribute itself to more acetylcholine synthesis like we talked about earlier, but it also has its own mechanisms where it can actually or has been shown to increase norepinephrine and dopamine levels and dopamine receptor densities as well, which is kind of nice. So there's a little bit of reason why we have these different cholines in here in these different amounts because they don't all share the same properties. So even though they can, they don't always do. So if you like that and any of the other stuff that you've seen here on Glaxon Lab today, don't forget to hit like, subscribe here, and share with everybody you know. Everybody, even strangers. Walk up to them on the street and tell them about watching this and how I just slapped a fish on a table. Um, so anyway, yeah, tune in for part four. We're going to be here next time talking about the uh, different adaptogens found in Adrenal.